All right, guys, welcome to the second tutorial that I'm doing in the series on uh, algorithmic or building an algorithmic forex machine learning strategy. Um, in the last video, we just did a, did a basic introduction on machine learning and forex and the strategy uh, overview that we're going to be doing. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and get started with how to get data, or where to get it, uh, cleaning it up, and plotting it. Um, we're going to be using Python. Plotly and Pandas. So, um, if you guys haven't watched any of my other videos, I like to use PyCharm CE. Makes things uh, pretty much easier, um, in my opinion. So that's what I'll be doing. Uh, feel free to use whatever you want. So first off, uh, we'll just talk about some data sources and places where you can get data. Um, one of the most common ones that used to be was uh, was Yahoo Finance or Google. But lately, for some reason, they've been shutting down their Forex historical data, like uh, APIs. I'm, I haven't found anyone to confirm this, but uh, the Pandas Web Scraper or Data Reader isn't working. Um, FFN, which is this right here, Financial Functions for Python. Um, I used to use this a lot, but it's not working either. And it's not working with Google or Yahoo, so I don't know if there's some sort of limitation that they're imposing now but you can't I mean correct feel free to correct me but I haven't been using this or Yahoo Finance because of that reason lately um, there's other there's numerous other places where you can get data you just have to be aware that it's not going to be very clean just because um, different brokers you know have different practices different data resolution there's a whole bunch of other factors that go into it. So you want to research where you're getting your data from first. Um, I get Personally, I get my data from Dukoscopy or Dukoscopy, which is a, a Swiss Forex bank. And so what you're going to want to do is just, and I'll link this in the description, but just go to this website um, and, and then uh, head down here to market research and do historical data feed. And it'll bring you to this uh, little embedded uh, web uh, little downloader thing. So for this, let's just let's just go and do the euro versus the dollar. Um, and then you'll want to select a tick. So we're going to do hours for this strategy. So just pick an hour, but you can do day. It'll work for day too. I've tested it for minute and doesn't seem to work. So we'll do uh, hours. And then let's just go ahead and go from the start of 2016 or 2017 through today. And uh, for the time zone, I just green which mean time. Uh, I would suggest you start doing this now because later when we integrate with the OANDA or, or with a broker API for live practice trading, they all use uh, green which mean time, so it's easier to get familiar with that now. So then you'll have to log on. And after you log on, it'll just start downloading automatically, and then you'll just do save as CSV. Alrighty, so once you get that downloaded, it should be in your downloads folder. Um, let's see, right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename this one your USD hours.csv. And if we go ahead and open this up to take a look at it, we have the GMT time, open, high, low, and close volume um, for for every hour that we had. I mean, minus the uh, minus the off days. So so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move that over to the folder that we're working in. Uh, you don't have to do this, you'll just have to adjust the path that you import it from. And then so, um, first thing we'll need is Pandas. If you guys aren't familiar with this, super powerful and go get a background. I'll link the documentation in the description. Um, so after we have Pandas, all we'll need to do is import the data. So we'll just call it DF for data frame. And we'll do pd.readcsv and then we'll put the name of that CSV file that we had and you can see it here, Euro USD hours .csv. Okay, so after you do that, 
can just see if it worked by doing print df.head and that'll just print like the first five entries. Okay, so that worked. Uh, the one thing that we, are, we notice here is that we have the index as integers increasing. What we want is for this time to be the index. So there's a couple different ways we can do it, um, but the easiest way is to go ahead and do it like this. So up here, we're going to do um, for the import actually, let's do it like this. So first let's rename the columns. So we'll do that by saying df.columns and then you'll put some double square brackets here and then we'll rename them. So and you gotta name them in order. So the first one we want is date. So that'll rename them. If we go ahead and run it again you can see that that is true and it renames them. Okay so now what we want to do is reformat this date because these are all string values right now and so we make them into date time objects. Um, by doing this, or panda state time objects, by df.date, so accessing the date column and setting it equal to p dot, pd dot two date time. So this converts to date time, and then we'll do df.date, and then the important part here is to do the format because pandas will read this date as month, day, year, but in reality, on Ducos Ducoscopy, I'll show you by opening this up, what in reality the first one is the date and the second one is the month so it's kinda like European style backwards us Americans aren't familiar with it so we'll have to change the date uh, format and we can use that by using these formatting characters here so we know that the first one here is the day so we'll do and then it's dot and then percent month dot and then percent big big Y for year and then it's the space in between the, the local time is after or the Greenwich Mean Time so we'll do percent um, and it's capital H for hours capital H or M for minutes and then capital S okay and then the, this uh, milliseconds here we, we're gonna put dot because there's a dot in between and then percent F percent F is for milliseconds. So now that that is all set up, um, if we run this, it'll convert all those from strings, and now they're in a, in a, in a uh, computer-friendly time format. And then we'll go down and um, we'll do df. Dot, or we'll set the data frame is equal to, and we'll reset the index now, or set index rather, to df.date. Alright, so now it's indexed by date. So if we run it again, we'll see that um, the date will move over. And if you see here, it's, uh, it's also in the, um, it's still in the data frame. So we can, um, we can, uh, we can drop that column now. And we can do that by doing df, it's equal to df, um, and then just by selecting these ones here, I believe that'll do it. Yeah, so now we just have open, high, low, close volume, and date. So this is what it would look like nice and cleaned up. And uh, right away you'll notice a problem is that all of these are the same. Um, and that's because these are, these are down times in the market uh, right now that we're looking at so we don't need these and we're not gonna they're not useful to us in any way shape or fashion so what we're gonna do is just drop them off by df dot drop duplicates and then we're gonna keep it's false so it's gonna drop all the duplicates if we do the same thing again now we should see some unique values on here okay so now we know that these are it we only are working with times where the market is live in the data all right, so now that all those are cleaned up, um, you know that that is like the first essential step to any doing any type of strategy development is making sure your data is nice and formatted, clean. So, and then after that, um, we'll we'll want to plot. And so I used to use Matplotlib. 
or Matplod Live as people pronounce it. But uh, I kind of got sick of it because it's kind of old fashioned. And I know there's a lot of documentation about it, but a lot of the times I found myself like having to reformat all my data just so I could plot it in a certain way. And what I really wanted was a platform that I could just throw it, you know, that was more robust where it could throw it a, a wider range of data formats and it could still plot. A great example is Matplotlib. It's kind of difficult to, to do candlestick charts. Um, and that's just because the the date time you have to you have to reformat this date time into float days, which is like a integer or a decimal version of date. And like for some reason, I always had a really difficult time doing that. So <laughs> I I didn't want to. I don't know. Matplotlib is great for other stuff, but for this, I found that I just don't like it. So instead, we're going to use a package called Plotly or Plotly, and it, I've just started using it recently, but I really, I really like it. Um, so to get that, we're just going to do. Oh, and first, obviously, you need to have this package. So come over here to their website, Plotly. Look at the documentation. These are the kinds of plots you can make. Really cool stuff. Um, it's it's a simple. Do one of these to get it. Um, pip3 install plotly that's it so super trivial go get it um, you don't have to you can use matplotlib or whatever else you want but this is what I'm gonna use so and then we're also gonna do one of these import tools oh sorry we're gonna do this import Plotly.graph objects as go. And then what we'll do is go ahead and create the graph. So first we're gonna we're gonna create what's called a trace. And a, a trace is just like a set a set of data for plotting, and that's what they call it in Plotly. So you set up trace, and then we'll go go for graph objects, and then we'll do OHLC, and this is a candle. So it's already set up automatically make things easy for us. And so we'll go down here and we'll do x, which is going to be our index. We have df.index. And then we're going to go through and just do open is equal to df.open, so on, so on. I'll fast forward here. All right, so now we have open, high, low, close. And then last, what we'll want to do is just name it. So this will give it an, a title for the legend. So we'll just call this uh, currency quote. Okay, so that's the trace. And after we have the trace, we'll go ahead and create the data by just putting uh, it in brackets. And then we can just do, um, we'll, go, we'll just do pi dot offline dot plot. And so this makes it so we don't need, we don't need like a server or anything to plot this. It's just gonna create a static HTML file um, to, for the plot. And then we'll do data, and then we'll do file name. And so this is going to create an HTML file for our plot, and we'll just call this uh, you know, tutorial.html. So if we run this, it should open up the web browser automatically with our plot. Look at that. Beautiful. Not going to see anything like this in, in uh, <laughs> matplotlib. So what we can do here is we can zoom in, zoom out. So if we want, like, you zoom in by selecting an area here, and then you can zoom in also. Uh, there's a way to zoom in vertically too, but I think I gotta add another plot to it. So after we have all this, we know that it's working, and you can see over here, currency quote increasing, decreasing is red. We can change those colors if we want, but we're gonna leave it that way. Um, we're coming to the end of the tutorial here but before we end that I'm just gonna show you guys how to create a typical view that you would see with like the volume or maybe like a, another indicator on the bottom of the graph so to do that let's just go ahead and first create a moving average we'll call this MA and to do that we have a built-in function with pandas so we'll do df.open so that's the series so 
we're going to do the moving average of the opening, or let's just do close. Um, and we'll do dot rolling and the center is equal to false and then the window is equal to 30 so this is going to be a 30 hour since we're doing hours so 30 hour moving average and then dot mean and if you wanted you could do dot standard deviation or whatever you, you want but we'll do mean okay and then let's just name this one trace zero and then we'll create another trace so trace one is equal to go dot scatter. This is going to be a scatter plot. And we'll do x is equal to df dot index, the same as this one. And then we'll do y is equal to ma. So x and y. And then let's make another one too. So we'll do trace 2 is equal to go dot bar. Go a bar with x is equal to df dot index and y is equal to df dot volume. All right, so and now that we have that, what we'll do is we'll throw all those traces into the data like that. It's that easy. And then um, we'll make a figure before we plot. So let's go, let's go here and we'll do figure is equal to tools dot make subplots. And then we'll put how many rows we want. We want two rows, so one for the prices and then the next one for the volume or one for the prices and the moving average and then the other one for the volume and then uh, one column and then we'll do shared x axis is true and so this will make it so that if we zoom in on one of them it'll zoom in on the other so the two are linked nicely and then we'll do fig dot append trace um, trace zero and, we'll, and then you want to put the location on the subplot that you want it so for this one we'll do one one and then fig dot pen trace and then trace one. So we want this to also be with the prices, so we'll put it with one one. And then fig dot append trace two and then two one. So row column, row column, row column. Okay, and then instead of putting data here, you will just do um, plot the figure that we just created. So if we do this. Look at that. So this is this is what you would typically see when doing um, when you when you look at any trading platform or any like data viewing. And so these are linked now. So if I zoom in on this area here, it takes a second to load it. So it'll zoom in, and and then what we can do is we can do a vertical zoom to blow this up to make to see it better. And later on, uh, if you want, you can play around with the actual size of these axes so we would scroll down and up and stuff but we would have a better view it would be bigger but yeah I really like this plot uh, plotly uh, I think it's highly superior to matplotlib um, but you know that's just my opinion so you guys decide do whatever you want to do so that is pretty much it for the tutorial um, so what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be creating if you guys remember I talked about 